Welcome to the Center for Discovery's Integrated Arts Virtual Training Series. My name is Jessica Calabrese and I am the training coordinator of our Healing and Integrated Arts programs. Located less than two hours from New York City, the Center for Discovery is a major research and specialty center that offers residential, medical, clinical, and special education programs to 1,200 children and adults with complex disabilities, medical frailties, and autism spectrum disorders each year. Through this series of seminars, it is our hopes to inspire and teach others about our creative therapeutic programs and learnings, and ultimately advance the standard of care for all individuals with complex disabilities. As we like to say, what happens here matters everywhere. This week, we welcome Kanye Loretto, our Director of Music Therapy, and Rachel Shayet, one of our occupational therapists. Each year, Kanye and Rachel work with students and adults to teach theater classes and create, rehearse, and direct our Discovery Drama performances. Today, Kanye and Rachel will be sharing their program with us. My name is Kanye Loretto, and I am the Senior Director of the Music Therapy Program here at the Center for Discovery. Hello, I'm Rachel Shayet, an occupational therapist here at the Center. Welcome to The Show Must Go On, creating a dramatic arts program for individuals with complex conditions. During this seminar, you will learn about our Discovery Dramatic Arts Program at the Center for Discovery, how it was started and the many ways it has developed and grown. You will discover the benefits of a Dramatic Arts Program for individuals with complex conditions, including autism and multiple disabilities. And you will hear many suggestions for ways to structure a dramatic arts program based on our own experiences and the lessons we have learned. Everything we do at the Center for Discovery relates back to our Healthy Six model of care. The six pillars found here are utilized to create opportunities for optimal health, wellness, and managing stress. Our drama program considers all of these areas as we thoughtfully set up environments for teaching and learning and provide opportunities for energy regulation and especially emotional regulation. Many years ago now, a few individuals enrolled in our residential program expressed an interest in performing and acting in a play. I was contacted because I had a passion for theater and had directed a production of The Wizard of Oz with a group of young children from the Center School Age program a few years earlier. I was also connected with two other staff members at the Center a program manager and a psychologist who also had a passion for theater and experience performing on stage. Together, we decided instead of just jumping right in and rehearsing and staging a play, we would instead begin by teaching the ins and outs of performing on stage, teaching things like how to be an actor, how to develop a character, stage presence. And so began our first drama class that then led to our first main stage production which led to another production, and then another. Not long after this all began, Rachel joined our team. And as we witnessed our actors and actresses gaining new skills, we increased the scope of the program to expand its impact and reach. So why dramatic arts? Well, when we think about all the different kinds of skills that we work on within the drama program, all the different theater skills, you're really also working on different life skills. For example, you know, we're working on practicing lines, we're working on diction, projection, dialogue, all those things, if you're practicing them over and over again, you're going to feel naturally more comfortable to do that in your daily life. One of my favorite things about the drama program is the friendships that develop. And I think that happens just from being with people for extended periods of time, being able to do silly, fun things together um, that you might not be able to do in a school or work setting. And naturally friendships blossom from that. Also, um, just by participating in different activities where we really have to use our imagination, maybe pretending we're in a scenario that's not really there or having to use a prop that's not really there, you're having to be really creative and use your imagination, which kind of helps our participants really think outside the box and beyond the concrete. And then just by being able to kind of be on stage and have the confidence to, you know, you practice lines, you you, you practice and practice and you'll be able to get on stage in front of a huge audience, it's really empowering for them and it's a really great confidence booster. So we offer different kinds of things within the drama program. One of them is the drama classes and within these classes we really work on the basic theater skills. 
emotional expression, kind of introduction to stage directions, really some very basic dialogue initially, um, and it really starts getting the students and the adults really thinking about all the skills that they will need if they do want, one day want to be in a show. Um, and also just for developing those skills for life. We also offer some different specialized classes, such as we have a comedy, we had a comedy class, a musical theater class, and an emotional expression class. And those really just kind of hone in on specific skills and, um, and also are based on the needs of the participants. We've also done dramatic arts showcases where we're really just allowing the drama club participants to kind of show off what they've learned within the classes. And it's a great opportunity to kind of introduce them performing those kinds of things in front of an audience. And then we have full scale productions, plays and musicals, where we really do the whole thing from start to finish. Um, we have them audition initially, right down to the, um, the production several months later. There have been many principles that have guided our work in the dramatic arts. Right from the start, we presumed competence. We believe that by capitalizing on each individual's strengths and using thoughtful adaptations and supports, we could find a way for them to be successful in our program, be it performing on stage or working behind the scenes. We learned to give things time. Patience has been key. We figured out pretty quickly that we couldn't rush the process of creating a show, but rather had to give the time and space for each participant to find their way. For example, many of our actors and actresses needed extra time to process our directions and suggestions. We had to make sure to leave room for that. Many of our actors are very concrete thinkers. We needed to take time to teach the imaginative thinking necessary to become a character on stage. If we rushed, opportunities for learning and growing would be lost. We have embraced how the process of rehearsing a show, how each of the steps along the way, creates avenues for developing skills. But we also keep our eyes on the end product. We set high expectations for our productions and are committed to creating an entertaining piece of theater for our audiences. To do so, we have to take calculated risks. We made a decision early on that we wanted our actors and actresses to perform on stage on their own, without the support of staff members or typically developing peers performing next to them. Stepping on stage is risky for any actor, never mind for an actor or actress with significant challenges. But we believe the impact of the program on our actors and actresses, the pride they feel in their accomplishments, is at its strongest when we take that risk. And all of this happens through thoughtful, deliberate collaboration. I think just about every department at the center has lended its support to our, to our shows. Our speech therapists, for example, help our actors and actresses learn their lines, that our classroom teachers then practice with them. Our recreation team helps our students work behind the scenes to build sets and costumes. I could go on and on. The head of our quality improvement department serves as our stage manager. Our dance department does all of our choreography. But instead of going on, I will say that the success of our productions truly comes from the community spirit that guides them. We will now talk about each of the components of our dramatic arts programs, starting first with our drama classes. The drama classes we teach at the center happen at one of three levels. At the beginner level, we use simple theater games and exercises to help develop basic concept and social skills for the participants. At the intermediate level, we begin to work on more enhanced, enhanced social skills as we strengthen the participants' knowledge and understanding of being on stage. Finally, at the advanced level, participants are working on much more advanced theater concepts, like developing a character using body language, facial expressions, and their voices. And at this level, we begin working on and staging simple scenes. This list contains many of the activities we facilitate in our drama classes. Each class begins with a warm-up that focuses energies and prepares the body and sensory system for the work ahead. The other activities are just like those found in a typical acting or theater class, theater games and improvisation to develop creative, imaginative thinking, spontaneity, 
reciprocal interactions, character development, scene work. We also teach and use typical theater directions and concepts. We teach which way is stage left, which way is stage right, what does it mean if you're standing center stage or off stage. Participants know what it means to block a show. And in some of our classes, we end with a review of what we have learned and how we felt about it, sometimes capturing it in a journal. So when we're facilitating drama class, there's different things that we want to think about. First of all, the activities should really consider all the different learning styles. We want to think about visual learners. Sometimes we use, we use board maker icons or visual modeling for those individuals. We want to think about auditory learners, so maybe using verbal prompts or music or rhythm within our activities. And we want to think about tactile and kinesthetic learners, where we really want to use maybe more body language or touch prompts as needed to kind of help them to learn the activities. We also want to sequence the activities in a way that's a little bit more clear to our participants. So for example, we might say, all right, first we're going to walk to center stage, stop, and then say hello. So we're really providing that nice clear sequence for them to participate. We also try to keep our directives very simple. So we use clear, simple language. Um, we're not gonna put any extra, any, any extra words in there that don't really need to be there. We also will use visual prompts as needed. So when we use scripts or different activities where we really need to explain things a little, a little bit more clearly, we might use, again, more icons. We've also used stage markers, which are um, pretty much just colored dots on the stage to kind of show individuals where they need to go. And then Kanye and myself will always model our expectations before we ask um, our actors to do it, just so that they kind of see a visual example of what we are asking them to do. So in this exercise, we refer to as waking a sleeping person, um, working on a couple different skills, acting and reacting to one another, the element of surprise, and that reciprocal interaction. And action. So Tracy, okay. we spoke no. to oh. Stephanie. <laughs> 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 This next excerpt comes from one of our beginning drama classes. We are learning about using our faces to communicate an emotion and how, as an actor, this is important in order to communicate with our audience. So to do so, we are imagining that we are holding an egg in our hand and then we are cracking that egg on top of our head and then we have to react and really show the audience how yucky that would be to have an egg on your head. In the video, you'll see that um, the students are actually using mirrors so that they can see their faces. First, I have modeled what that face would look like, and then the, and then the students are, are meant to do the same thing and using a mirror so that they can see their faces and know if they are being successful. Here's the clip. Egg. And get ready. Put it on your head. One, two, three. Head. <laughs> Within our drama program, we offer different specialized classes. For example, we've done a comedy class where we use different humor activities and props, such as a squirting flower, making funny sounds, or a hand buzzer within our class. We've also done a musical theater where we focus on really one topic and really kind of explore that, such as makeup or dance and movement. Then we've also done some emotional exploration classes where we really kind of focus on an individual um, and really explore their emotions using different dramatic activities. So after individuals have been participating in drama for a while, the drama classes, we then ask them to participate in a dramatic arts showcase. So they're really able to kind of get used to performing those different things in front of an audience. We do only invite a small audience so that they're able to kind of get used to that and the interaction that they have between the different audience members. And we allow them to really try out those different things that they've practiced. We will kind of explain each activity and talk about the different skills that it addressed when we were practicing it. And the kind of cool thing is it really serves as a way for them to get used to the audience and being on stage 
so that they're able to participate in those full-scale productions at some point. And now to talk about our productions. At the center, we have staged adapted versions of Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream, A Christmas Carol, the musicals Guys and Dolls, The Lion King, Fiddler on the Roof, and Beauty and the Beast. As we set out to produce and stage a show, we set some high expectations right from the start. As mentioned earlier, we wanted our actors and actresses on stage performing on their own without the need for a staff member next to them or other support. We also agreed that we wanted to produce a high quality piece of theater. Sure, our productions are educational and therapeutic, but they especially had to be entertaining. We also agreed that our rehearsal process would be just like the rehearsal process for any other show. Yes, modifications and adaptations were necessary for our actors to be successful, but the process should be the same. That's why we use stage terms and directions in rehearsals. We hold auditions and post the cast list. We create a thorough rehearsal schedule that includes rehearsals around staging, around music, and around dance. And with each production, our individuals have become more and more involved behind the scenes. The individuals in our program help build and paint the sets, they help make the costumes, they create the program for our show. Within our productions, our students have the opportunity to develop advanced pro-social skills, skills that can be harder to teach. They learn cooperation, working together towards a common goal. They learn empathy, they learn responsibility. So, how do we make this happen? First and foremost, we pick a show that is centered around the strengths of our actors and actresses. We adapt the script based on the strengths of our actors and actresses. So we don't usually present the full production, but instead a version that's about half an hour to 45 minutes long. The script is written based on what our actors and actresses can do. If they can say one word, that word is incorporated into the script. If they're really good at using their bodies and body language to communicate something, that becomes part of the script. If they can sing a song, they sing a song. If they can dance, they dance. So the script is, script is really modeled around what the strengths of our actors and actresses are. Um, oftentimes we include a narrator as part of it to help advance the story, but really our actors and actresses are the ones who are, are communicating the, the beauty of the story. We use visual supports, as Rachel mentioned, both on stage and off stage. So throughout the production, um, students sort of use markers on the stage to know where they're going. The backstage rules are posted using visuals to remind everyone to be quiet and to enter when they're supposed to. Um, as part of the rehearsal process, we use vid video modeling and audio recording. We will videotape our rehearsal so that the students can then take that back and study it and, and learn what they're supposed to do. Um, we carefully plan the rehearsal schedule. We don't want to have large groups of people coming at once because that can overwhelm our actors and actresses. So only a small group comes and works on a, a, a specific part of the script before moving on to the next part. And definitely we have to be flexible. What, um, what we learned is that we write a script and that starts the process going, but that script is, is living. It's going to change based on how the rehearsal process is going. We might drop a line, we might add some lines. We might say, oh, we actually need a dance here, or we need someone to cross the stage here, um, really based on what our actors and actresses are showing us. So we're constantly developing the script as, as the rehearsal process unfolds before we finally lock the show and present it to our audiences. Next, we'd like to share some clips and, and tell the stories of a few of our actors and actresses um, from some of our previous shows. The first clip is from our production of Guys and Dolls, and this is Gabby playing the role of Miss Adelaide. If you know the story of Guys and Dolls, Miss Adelaide really, really wants to get married, and the fact that she isn't causes her to have a really bad cold. So Gabby is playing the part of Miss Adelaide, and Gabby's strength really lies in being able to deliver one really strong line. She's not going to deliver a whole monologue, or she's not going to, you know, have a whole bunch of things to say, but boy, if you give her one word, she's really strong in being able to deliver that. And she delivers it very expressively and uses her body language and her facial expressions. So we wrote the script to really capitalize on that strength. 
you'll see her interacting with, with the actor playing Nathan Detroit, and he's sort of prompting her of when to, what, how she's going to react to him, but she's reacting using just one word or one expression. And as you'll see in the clip, she does it really, really well. So this is a great example of how we adapt the script in order to capitalize on the strength of our actors and actresses. So next we have a great clip from Beauty and the Beast. Uh, we have our Gaston and our LeFou. And I want you to kind of focus on our LeFou, who was played by Rick. When he first started with us in the drama classes and the shows, um, he was very timid. He had a hard time getting on stage. And then when he did, he had a hard time kind of projecting and using body language. And as you'll see from this clip, that is no longer a problem. He did a great job with really projecting, using a lot of emotional expression in his face and with his body, and we're very proud of him. Who does she think she is? No one says no to Gaston. That's right. Dismiss, reject it. It's more than I can bear. Bear, bear! Oh, look, I'm done. Nope. You know what? You're right. No, no one's slick as Gaston. No one's quick as Gaston. In a spit to match nobody. Spits like Gaston. I'm especially good in expectorating. I'm such a guy. Is this is a guy. Gaston! Next, we have another clip from Beauty and the Beast. Uh, this features several actors who were in a couple shows at this point, and it's really cool to see how far their stage presence had come, um, their emotional expression, their different, uh, and their body language, and really, mainly their interactions with each other have come really far. The patient, sir, uh, she had a rough day. I hope she's the one to break the spell. Me too. She's not coming. What do you mean she's not coming? She's not coming. We'll see about that. Get down now. I'm not hungry. Calm down now. No. Fine, then star. At this rate, we'll never break the spell. In this last clip of Beauty and the Beast, we will be watching Avery, who played Mrs. Potts. And when she first started, she also was very nervous about getting on stage. So she would, she would be really excited, but she got really kind of nervous and she would kind of um, have a hard time kind of expressing emotions and things when she got there. And as you can see from this, she did an awesome job. Um, she used a lot of expression. She was able to really sing and project her voice and to sing a solo, which is really, really great to see. Um, Something also really cool to note is that her skills have come so far that she's actually been participating in a virtual internship at our internal daycare here where she leads a sing-along for two different daycare classes over Zoom. And uh, she does the same thing. She's able to really project and use a lot of emotional expression. So it's really cool to see how those skills that she's learned in drama have really translated into a real-life vocational experience. <laughs>
When the COVID-19 pandemic hit, we had just cast and, and were in rehearsals for our next show. Unfortunately, we had to stop that production, but as the title of this seminar says, the show must go on. We quickly developed an opportunity for our actors and actresses to attend a virtual drama class where we are practicing a lot of the things that we practiced in person, but now over Zoom. And this platform has actually proved pretty successful in terms of how everybody's interacting with each other, really paying attention to their face and facial expressions. So um, we're happy to report that the work goes on through this virtual format. We also, this past fall, decided that we needed another production. Every time we were meeting with our actors and actresses, they were asking when they were going to be able to perform again. So we came together and, and developed an idea of a virtual play. Um, we found a script um, that had been adapted by the Periwinkle Theatre Company of a Native American folktale, the story of the great race between the buffalo and the magpie, and we, we videotaped all of our actors and ap actresses separately in their locations, and they learned their lines, they, they practiced their lines, they could practice together over Zoom, but then we, we recorded them each separately, and through the magic of editing, came together and, and presented our show. And here's a clip from The Great Race. Okay, so we will have a contest to see who is the most powerful. The winner gets to rule over all the others. Let's have a race to see who is the swiftest. The chief of the people said, Not fair, big brown buffalo. A friendly magpie who was nearby heard the human's problem. She liked people and wanted to help them. She said to the people, I'll help you. Tell that big brown buffalo you want me to race in your place. My two wings against his four legs. That sounds good. Thank you, Alu and Magpie. We'd like to thank you for attending today and for your interest in our Discovery Dramatic Arts program. If you'd like to learn more, you can stick around. We're about to have a live question and answer session. Um, so please stick around and send us your questions in the chat feature. But you can also reach out to us by email at integratedarts at tcfd.org. Or you can visit our website, which you see on the screen, which provides all kinds of resources about this and other integrated arts programs at the Center for Discovery. Thank you again. It was our pleasure to talk to you today. Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for attending today's virtual seminar. We hope you enjoyed the presentation. Rachel and I are here to answer any questions you might have. This is our live Q&A. So please use the chat feature and type in any questions you might have, and we are glad to answer them. Um, we actually already have a question that popped up. So there's a question about our audition process. Um, and I can tell you that um, our auditions are not cutthroat. So it's, it's certainly not very competitive. We try to make it a great learning experience along with everything else that we do. So when everybody comes, everybody comes as a group that's interested in performing in the show, and we just go through a, a lot of different exercises in order to gauge how comfortable they are on stage, to get a sense of, of what their strengths are and how they'd be able to contribute to the show. A lot of what we do is, in, is, is as a group, so we teach a song to the entire group. Um, we might teach a simple little dance combination to the group, um, some simple scenes. Sometimes it's just asking everybody to be on stage and use their faces and, and communicate through their faces and body language. So we just kind of go through the whole process um, that way and, and, and again, try to make it really comfortable for everybody and, and so we can get a sense of, of what their strengths are. Yeah. Oh. And we do try to keep it, some things as close to a typical audition as we can to kind of make that a cool experience for them. Um, but we do adapt some little things like we have a, an audition forms that we use. We actually use uh, visual icons for them for those that are non-readers, um, so they're able to fill out information as much as they can independently, um, and then some visuals for some of the songs and just describe some of the characters they might be acting out for the auditions. So we have another question from Wade. Hi, Wade. Um, we know each other a long time ago. Um, how many participants are involved in your group? So all of our, our cast usually are around 30 people. Mm -hmm. I think we've maxed out at about 30 participants in each production. Um, that's for the productions on stage, behind the scenes, and we run various drama classes, so there's more people involved um, 
within those classes. Our class size is usually six to eight students together, um, but on stage it's about 30 people. So. And then some of our specialty classes, like the emotional expression, have just been even just one student yep. or two students where we're focusing on something, something very specific. We just want a couple students that will accommodate as needed. Great. Any other questions? <laughs> All right, someone's asking, I'd like to know when you were in a show, how long did it take you to learn your song and your scene? Um, so thank you for that question. You know, when I, I think, you know, for everybody, it's different how long it's going to take for you to learn that, to learn the song or to learn your scene. Um, everybody goes through the rehearsal process. Sometimes you pick it up right away. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Um, it really just depends on, on, on you personally um, and, and how you're going to learn, how long it's going to take you to learn that. Thank you for that question. Um, great. Um, so we have a question. Uh, somebody is writing who was actually involved. Their students. It's a teacher here whose students were involved in the production. One of our productions, asking if parents are, are sent invitations. So we we our productions. We open up to all family members and our staff members here at the center. And I think everybody who comes in the, in the door gets something else from our. You know, gains something from the being an audience member in our productions. But in the end, I hope that everybody's just really enjoying a great piece of theater. That's our goal, ultimately. Yes. And that's like one of the very exciting things for a lot of our participants is they're very excited about being able to show their families and friends sometimes, you know, what they're able to do on stage. And their parents and families are always usually like wowed by it. So it's a really cool thing. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think we're good if, if uh, how many instructors? Um, good question. <laughs> How many instructors? So Rachel and I kind of take the lead in doing all the instruction um, for, for our drama classes. There's, there's really um, some other people that sort of jump in um, and help out, but Rachel and I kind of take the lead on all that stuff. Um, for our productions, you know, we have, we have a whole group of people that volunteer from around our center and, and help with every aspect of it and, and are instructing on the painting of sets and instructing on the, the building of costumes. So, you know, there, it's, it's a big, big event when we put on one of our productions and, and there's a lot of people that are involved. Um, and then within the classes, like I said, Rachel and I kind of take the lead for that. And then as far as like for students to practice their lines and songs outside of, you know, the rehearsals, a lot of teachers and teachers assistants are really great at taking on helping them practice outside of that. Even and families will do that as well. We send home their lines, their lyrics, and their, their um, so they're really instructors as well, but for the classes, it's mainly Connie and myself. Yeah. Great. Thank you for these questions. These are great. Um, I'm not seeing any more pop up. Um, if you have any more questions, you can definitely email us at integratedarts at tcfd.org, and we will be glad um, to email you back. If you have a great idea, we'd love to hear that too. Just, just any kind of correspondence, we welcome. and. Uh, Again, we thank you very much for joining us for this seminar. These seminars are going to continue into the month of March. Next month on Friday, or next week, on Friday morning, we'll be presenting outdoor adventures. Um, our recreation team will be talking about that. Again, at 11 o'clock with the live Q&A at 1130. So if, if you're interested in learning more, definitely reach out. And, uh, and thank you again for, for attending. Take care. Bye -bye. Thank you. <laughs>